Hello, welcome to Intentionally Waiting, Series 1, Episode 9, or is it 10? Okay, people, so what am I talking about this week? Oh, okay. Wow, it has actually been a very strange week, um, and I'm going to tell you why. The key reason and i mean in relation to my intentionally waiting status not in relation to everything else because it's always a strange week in relation to everything else but in relation to intentionally waiting it's been a strange week because i have come to the decision that i am coming off online dating for once for all for good now that i've got that out of my system i'm going to proceed to tell you why so some of you may already know that before I went on my let's go find myself Clara, let's go and get some extra love, let's go and, you know, see how you can transform yourself from within, I was predominantly on online dating and I was on a number of sites. I was on Match, I was on Bubble, I was on, what's the other one? Salt, because that's a Christian one and I think there was another one, Partnerships or whatever. And I was on all these dating sites. And... um when i went back to it because in the beginning of november it was like i'm going to do my social calendar but i'll also go back on to dating sites i went back onto it but something had shifted <laughs> it's like it wasn't the same anymore like i didn't feel like i was actually in the right place i felt like it just wasn't for me and that's a weird sense you know it's not like i haven't gone back five years or i haven't moved forward 10 and i've not moved home or anything and i don't think the dating sites have changed but something's changed and the only thing that i can think of that has changed is me um because i took that break and the reason why i decided to come off was because i don't know about you if you've ever been on a dating site or if you're currently on a dating site it's a chore it's not just a physical chore it's an emotional chore you know going through profiles and swiping left 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 and then finding a profile and swiping right and hoping someone's going to get back in touch with you and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait and then nothing or the person does get back in touch with you but they're nothing like what you expected and and the thing with online dating is like they kind of like rush the whole process so that they can get to meet you and at the point of meeting you that's the point when they're going to be when you're going to be like okay yes i like you i don't like you you know but you've had all this conversation beforehand and sometimes you've actually invested like emotions and an effort and things like that just because you're talking and you're thinking oh yeah we get on and there's a click here and then you get to meet the person and you're like no just no so why go through all of that when actually there are other ways, you know? And I get it. I absolutely get it that it's one of the easiest ways to meet a whole lot of people. But essentially, it is one of the easiest ways to meet a whole lot of people because you do, you, you know, I go through like all the different apps. And then not only is it the fact that you're going through, you're getting pinged all the time. So you're getting pinged from Match, you're getting pinged from Bubble. Oh, this person is interested in you. And of course, we're only human. So what we're going to do, we're going to check it out. We want to know who that person is. And you check it out and you think, oh, right, okay. And then you get pinged again. And then you do exactly the same thing again. And it's just like crazy. So I'm going to tell you a story. And I'm going to end this story at the end of this podcast. So if you want to know exactly what I did at the end of this story, then fast forward to the end so anyway and this was kind of like the time the point when i made the decision i was going to come off online dating for good and i know some of you that know me already are thinking i've heard this all before clara i've heard this all before but this is for good honestly this is like there is zero chance of me going back on online dating zero chance so anyway so on this faithful day i was going through my um online dating as i usually do and most of the time i'm swiping left and swiping left means um you're not interested unless you're on salt which means you swipe right and you're still not interested so anyway 
So I was swiping left, 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 left. And then someone caught my eye. And it's been a while since somebody's caught my eye. And I'm the kind of person, and you know, I've said this before, that I believe that, you know, a man finds the woman, but a woman positions herself to be found. So my whole idea was I'm going to position myself on the social media sites. Not social media. Why am I saying social media? Scratch that. Dating sites. And they shouldn't be called dating sites. They should be called meetup sites because no one's actually dating on these sites. All you're doing is just meeting up. Anyway. So. And then this guy caught my eye. And I looked at his profile. And he seemed to be everything that I wanted. Like, you know, he was a Christian. He had the right height. He looked good. He was well-groomed. He had a couple of different photos so I could see, like, different angles and things like that. And I liked his write-up. And I thought, hmm, this seems like a person that I could quite frankly like to get to know more of. So, anyways, because he wasn't the person that, you know, it wasn't like he'd seen me and liked me, so that wasn't the case. Um, it was just the case that he was actually, I think there's an old algorithm and they select the kind of people that they think you're going to like. And they were spot on in this time because I did like him. So I sent him a little message and just says hi because he had this beautiful smile. So I said, oh, you've got a beautiful smile. And everyone tells me I've got a beautiful smile. So I thought, you know, two people with two beautiful smiles together, that would be such a perfect match anyway. So um, I sent the message, you've got a beautiful smile. Day one, no response. And you're okay because actually, you know, I do have a life. I'm not sitting by my computer or my phone. But th there is this thing at the back of my head going, mm, yeah, has he responded? Has he not responded? And you know he hasn't because the likes of Match ping you when somebody responds. So anyway, that day didn't happen. Day two, no response. Day three, no response. So this is a time when I now got on my knees to God and I was like, God, I'm sick and tired of all of this. It's just ridiculous. Like I'm, I'm pretty much phone watching and I don't want to be phone watching because I've got better things to do in my life. So in order for me not to phone watch, if it is the case that this guy is meant to be in my life, then I want him to respond to me by the end of that day, by the end of that day. And that could have been 12 midnight, whatever the time is, God can do it. I know he can do it because he's done it before. 12 midnight, respond to me. And if he doesn't respond to me, I'm done, 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 done with dating sites. Because clearly what you're telling me is that he's not there. The person I'm supposed to be with is not there because I've been on this for a long time. And I also believe that, you know what, God doesn't want to punish you, <laughs> really. And sometimes these dating sites, they are like punishment. I don't think God wants to punish you. So I think that if it was the case that I was going to meet my guy on the dating site, I would have met him a long time ago. And since that's not the case, I've just been kidding myself for how many months now? Just over six months? Yeah, okay. And, and the time before that, and the time before that, and the time before that. Having said that, though, I did date a guy that was, and I met him on, social, um, on the dating site, and we were together for two years, but then only two years. So, hey, I don't want to be a two-year wonder. I don't want to be doing this thing every two years. That's not me. You know, it's like once and for all, that's, that's me. So anyway, so that was the prayer that I said to God. I was like, if he doesn't respond by 12 midnight, I'm just going to come off all the dating sites, all the meetup sites. I'm just not going to do it anymore. And I'm just literally, literally going to focus 100% on God because I can't do this anymore. I literally can't do this anymore. Um, and I'm like, you know, God, you know where he is. You know exactly you know exactly what he's doing right now. You can see it. So so if you can see him and you know where he is, then you know how to do that. You can do that. So why am I stressing myself over this? I'm just going to continue with my social calendar, continue with, you know, hanging out with my friends, hanging out with myself and doing the kind of things that I want to do and let God just take the wheel. Like, you know, sometimes you think that you've, that you've given the wheel to God, but you haven't, you're kind of like doing like this, you know, and he's just saying, let go, let go. And you're like, mm, I'm, not, I'm not quite ready to let go yet. No, 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 I just want to do this one thing. And that being me throughout this whole process. So anyway, so the end of the day came and as you can imagine, no response. I'm like, yep, that's it. 
close all my accounts. So Clara Alexander is not on any dating sites, or if she is, she doesn't know she's on any dating sites. So if you see Clara Alexander on a dating site, that's not me, that's some other Clara Alexander. Definitely not me. Anyway. So, um, so anyhow, this was Wednesday. So, and then Friday, two days later, guess what? Ping! I got a ping from Match. He had responded. No, the screen did not freeze. I, I just did that. Um, he had responded. <laughs> now the challenge comes. Because I had prayed to God and had said to God that I was coming off if something hadn't happened by a particular date. Now, it hadn't happened by this date, but it had actually happened two days later. So, what do you think I actually did? I'm going to tell you that at the end of this podcast. So, if you want to find out exactly what I did whether I contacted him back or I ghosted him or I peeped into the message and didn't contact him or I threw my phone down the toilet because I just couldn't make a decision. If you want to know what it was, then wait till the end of this podcast because now I want to talk about something serious. I want to talk about focusing on God. That's, that's the serious thing I want to talk about because... I watched a podcast the other day. I watched lots of these podcasts about how people meet their spouses and stuff like that. I don't know if you do, but I do. And there was a particular podcast that podcast yeah, podcast that caught my attention. And they were a couple that um, they were a million miles away from each other, and um, literally, you know, she'd been on a number of dates that had failed and he'd been on a number of dates that failed. He'd been on relationships that failed, just not the right places, not the right people. And independently of each other, they decided that they were going to focus on God. They decided, you know, they've, they've done it their way and they can't do it anymore. And they're just going to put everything to God and just actually not just put it up to God, because there's one thing where you put hang something in the hands of God, but there's another where you actually just seek him so you try you know you try to learn to to be more engaged with him to communicate with him to love him more to find out more about him you know you're actively engaged in that to to get your warmth and your comfort and everything from him actively not pass passively but actively and they decided to do that independently and in them doing that independently they actually kind of like got connected together and god did that and now they're married, so end of the story. So I thought to myself, and it's not that I'm doing this because I'm looking at the end result, but I'm just actually doing it because I think after all that I've been through and all that I've done, it's the only option that actually makes sense. Because in the Bible, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you. And all of the things includes my spouse, my family, my finances, you know, my lifestyle, or everything else, if I just did that one thing. So why is it that I'm trying to do everything else, you know, when I could actually just do one thing, which is seek God and his righteousness? And I think it's such an awesome thing because, like, in a way, when you think about it, it's like, oh, is that all I have to do? Like, just focus on God and, and God will do the rest, you know, it kind of like, it's almost like this get out of jail card free card, get out of jail free card, it's, it's almost like that, it's like when you focus on that one thing and, you know, and you stop focusing on those individual things that you're trying to put into place, those individual things will come, it's like there was another thing that I saw on Facebook the other day, and it was about a lady um, and, you know, she had a visitor that came to a door. It's hypothetical, by the way, because and one visitor was called love. The other was called wisdom and the other was called, what was the other one called? Had faith, wisdom, wealth. Right. OK. And she was supposed to choose one. Like, you know, which one do you want to come into your house? Because you could only choose one and um, you can't choose all three. 
So luckily she chose love. And But when she chose love, she found that wealth and wisdom followed love. And she goes, well, I thought I was only allowed to choose one. She goes, yeah. but they said, yeah, yes, you can only choose one. But the thing is, is that whenever you choose love, wisdom and wealth will always follow love. So, and it's the same thing. It's like, whenever you choose God, all other things in your life will follow and will come into place. So I've now started on my journey to seek God. And I believe that, I strongly believe that in me seeking God and seeking God first, that everything's going to happen. Um, so, so I would like 100% happy to come off the dating sites, 100% happy to stop focusing on, you know, is my husband coming today? Is my husband coming today? Is he, you know, is it tomorrow? Am I going to meet him tomorrow? And because I don't know about you, but I've got this thing. <laughs> I got this thing. I wake up in the morning, right? And I'm like, oh, is this today? And like, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Like, if I'm rubbing my fingers and my hands for anything. I want to be rubbing my hands because it's a brand new day and it's another day for me to like just soak up the glory of God and be in God and, and worship him and love on him. That's why I want to be rubbing up my hand. I don't want to be rubbing up my hand thinking, oh, is this the day that I'm going to meet my partner? No, I don't want to do that. And that's a difficult thing. And one of the prayers that I've, I've asked God to do is that, you know what? Any time when I wake up or any time in the day when I start to think about is it him? Could it be him? You know, that automatically I will know that it is not him. Because the day that I'm going to meet the guy that's going to come into my life, that day, that moment, that hour, that second, I would have forgotten about him. Because my focus will be on God. And that's my prayer that I have for God. And I pray that that happens and that, you know, and God answers my prayers. And, and I believe that he will because it's a good prayer. It's a prayer that God likes because God is a jealous God. So, so he likes it when we focus on him. So now what I'm going to be talking about um, in, you know, in the next episodes is really how I do that. How I navigate through focusing on God, the kind of things that, that I do. Um, to focus on him because it's not necessarily an easy thing. It's easy to say, but it's not necessarily easy to do because there's other things that come into the way. There's other things that you might think are more important. There's other things that are much more engaging. There's other things that even like sometimes much more fun. You know, you gotta you gotta be truthful here. Sometimes there's things that are much more fun that you'd rather do than than seek God. But, you know, but he has said it in his word to do it. And I believe that anything that he has said in his word is true. So if he said it in his word and he's also given you a promise as well, because he said, and as, as I repeat again, if you seek me, then all these things will be added to you. So so that's a promise. That's not just a, a, a statement. It's a promise. So but in order for you to get that promise, you need to do what he's asked you to do. So this is why. Now, for me, it's about seeking God. And this is, we're still on the journey. We're still on intentionally waiting. But now I've come full circle. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? Actually, for me, I believe that the way to intentionally wait is to seek God. <laughs> is to seek God. Is to seek God and his kingdom. And um, and I'm going, and I am believing that by doing this, I'm going to have some news to tell you very, very soon because the fact that this has been laid on my heart in this period of time, I believe that um, it's for a reason, you know. I believe that it's the season to, and, and I don't think that I'm going to be waiting that much longer. Um, so I'm going to stop it there because, yeah, I know I've got you all excited and you're thinking, oh my gosh, Pray for me, <laughs> pray for me, if you know, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. I could do with all your prayers, uh, you know, good, good prayers though, good prayers. <laughs> I could do with all your good prayers. Um, but I think if there's any one prayer that, you know, I would want you to pray for me is that I do from my heart um, learn how to seek God and learn how to trust him 
and learn how to get into his word and read his word and understand him more and learn more about him. Because you know, the more you learn about somebody, the more you are actually connected to that person. The more you learn about the things, the more you engage with them, the more you're connected to that person, the more the relationship that you have with that person, the more, the deeper you go in the relationship. So, you know, that's something that I've got to start to learn to do, which is what um, hopefully um, I will be doing now for the, for the rest of my life. So it's not just for a season, but it's just forever. Just wanting to be able to put him first in my life and seek him and seek, um, seek his kingdom. So I'm going to stop there because this is a new journey. This is a new journey, continuation, but it's still, still a new journey. I'm looking forward to, to this part of my life. Um, but before I close, I did say to you that I was going to tell you what I did with when I got the response um, from that guy that I liked. So what I did is, first of all, first of all, I panicked. I was just like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And then I tried to rationalize with myself and I thought, you know what? Well, technically speaking, um, you know, I did say that if he did respond, like, you know, um, I didn't say, what was I? Technically speaking, I didn't say that if he did respond that I wasn't going to look at the response. So I did, you know, I tried to do play on words with that and I thought you know, maybe that would work. Um, but then, you know, when you get convicted that, yes, Clara, you're just trying to get away with some crap. Excuse my words. Um, you're just trying to get away <laughs> from doing the right thing. So what I did is I did what most people do when they're trying to win a million pounds, phone a friend. So I phoned a friend and a friend that I had spoken to about my covenant that I'd had with God about coming off the, the dating sites. And she really um, helped me to understand that, you know what, I had actually given God a precise timing. I had said by the end of Wednesday, and if God knew that I was meant to speak with that person or connect with that person, he would have made it so. And he didn't make it so because the person contacted me two days later, which is outside of God's window. God could have done it in that time frame. There's nothing that he cannot do. And the fact that he chose not to is a testament to him to see, well, what am I going to do if he actually contacts me after I'd made the covenant with God? So when she kind of like put me on the straight and narrow, because sometimes you do need a person to put you on the straight and narrow because you can't do it in your own strength. And, you know, what you want to do is totally different from what you should do. And you know what? The good thing about our conversation, my conversation with her is like, it wasn't about, um, it wasn't about condemning me because it's still like, you know, she still said, God's still going to love you and God's still going to bring the partner for you. But it may just be that it's just going to take a little bit longer because, you know, you're going to have to heal from the actions that you've done because you don't know. It might be that you have an action. He, the response is X, Y, Z. And then they get another response, another response. And before you know it, you guys are meeting up. And before you know it, you guys are dating. And then before you know it, you guys have broken up another two years. So, and that was the point where I was like, yeah, you got a point. So I did two things. First of all, I did not look at the email. So to, to even at this point now, I do not know what that email says. I don't know whether he says, thank you very much. You're most welcome. I don't know where he's like, says, oh, would you like to meet up? I don't know anything. I don't know what the response was. And I feel comfortable in that decision, that I believe I made the right decision not to respond to the message. Because I believe that if it actually is him, God's going to find another way for him to contact me. So, hey-ho. So that's what I did. What would you have done in that situation? Would you have done what I did or would you have done something else? I'll be interested to know your comments. Anyway, finally, I always, on a note, final note before I finish, um, come up with the name for this podcast. And I think I'm going to give this the name that I'm actually going to post up. And I'm going to say why I decided to come off the dating sites. That's it. Why I decided, me, Clara Alexander, decided to come off the dating sites for good. Hopefully I'm going to use that. <laughs> anyway, guys, been blessed having a chat with you. I hope I have blessed somebody. If not, well, you've heard my week. <laughs> you know what I'm about. Take care, everybody. Speak to you next week. Bye-bye.